Hello everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Essence. Now, um, the topic that I am going to discuss in today's video is something that um, not everyone might agree with, and that's okay. This is really just uh, a firm opinion of mine, but as with all opinions, you don't have to take it at face value. It is really just something that I firmly believe in. So if you have a different opinion on it, um, I'm not here to offend nobody. I'm not here to make waves. I'm just here to try and help people um, learn spiritually uh, the way that I did uh, in my own way. So uh, if you guys have a different view than mine, okay. Okay, that's fine. I'm not here to try and convince you that what I'm saying is right. I'm just trying to tell you what I think. Okay. That being said, because I know there's a lot of people out there who are just ready to start fights on the internet. So, today's topic, I'm going to be talking to you about the supreme power. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, there are quite a few spiritual paths and religions out there who, um, above the gods that we worship, whether, the, you know, uh, the ones that I've talked about, you know, like uh, Danu, Isis, Rhiannon... Uh, Freya, things like that. Many firmly believe that there is a a more intelligent being above all of them. Uh, there is said to be seven realms of the spirit world, each represented by our chakra. Because there are seven chakras and seven portals, they are, to going to these spiritual realms. And on the seventh one, there is said to be the one who created us, who created the earth, who created the stars, who created the universe, who created matter and reality and all dimensions. Um, personally, I don't know. I don't know for certain. I'm still uh, a newbie when it comes to astral projection, and I want to study as much of the spiritual realm as I can. But supposedly we cannot enter this seventh realm unless we are like completely pure of energy. We have to be completely balanced in order to reach him or her or it. I don't know. Why well, assume it's gender? I don't know. Do I firmly believe that uh, it exists? Yeah. I believe that the universe is so vast and so complex and so amazingly incredible there has to be an incredible force behind it. After all, if you've uh, seen some of the dinosaurs, you know, and how freaky they looked, you're like, someone was having fun with these. Uh, and when you look at how certain organisms do things, um, how plants... How they take in light and they found a way to produce oxygen so that the rest of the earth can have living organisms upon it. That is incredible. Some people may call this form uh, nature. Some people may call it the being that created nature. Um, what do I believe it is? This is a theory on my part, but it is based on experience. Hear me out, okay? So I've created a world of my own in my uh, imagination, in my mind. It's been with me for a long, long time. Ever since I was a little kid, me and my uh, childhood friend used to go to it all the time. And uh, we still go to ours. Where we've created living creatures, uh, we've created all kinds of animals, plants, human beings, we've created different kinds of uh, humanoid creatures, we've created uh, planets among planets, among planets of planets, you know, we, we created a whole universe. And I'll get into that later on in, the, in my channel. I'm going to do a whole segment on it, whole huge segment on it, to help you, you know, learn this. But... As I was saying. And I have firmly interacted with the people on this world. I've talked to them. 
They've talked to me. They're very intelligent. Um, I've, you know, pet a lot of the animals on there. I've fed them. I've made plants grow out of nowhere, you know, and I've created new things. I'm like a god of this world because I'm the one who created it. So hear me out. What if the whole universe, this planet included, is in someone's mind. We are basically the machinations of someone's imagination, someone's overactive imagination. And the only reason we live is because this person continues to feed us with energy, continues to think about us, continues to send us energy, as well as many other planets out there. And if we, if this person were to say, I don't know, die, or stop thinking about us. Our universe just falls apart. The planet ends. All planets end. And um, this reality that we know just falls into oblivion. Now, some of you people, if I sent you into a midlife crisis, um, not a midlife crisis, uh, an existential crisis, so sorry. I know this kind of thinking can drive one mad because you're like, what if it's true? What if we are in someone's mind? Who is it? What is their name? Where are they? What is the world like on the outside? Because I've told this to the people living in my world to a certain few. I'm telling them about how my world is and I'm like, it's nothing like this. I like this world much better than I like my own world. And they're like, really? We're, we were like, you know, you're like a god and all. And, you know, how can you say that the world you live in is nothing like this? I'm like, because it's not. I got to go to work. I got to, I got to, you know, maintain fitness. I got to work to make money. I've got to do things myself. I don't have the powers I do here. I'm very lucky to have this place to call home because if, you know, when I go back, I'm, I'm not as powerful. I can't just make someone obliterate into flames, you know? And if I did, you know, ooh boy, if looks could kill, you know? But anyway, and they're like, really? And I have to, I have to think, okay, so maybe this person follows by a different set of rules. Certain gods may show themselves in human form to some people, and some may never show themselves to, like, some people. I go by a different set of rules. Now, in this world of mine, I haven't shown myself to everyone, but everyone knows I exist. Now, some people believe in me, some people don't. You know, I give people the free will to follow what they want. Some people have their own religions, their own gods, and they are real in my world. But I am the highest one above all of them because I am the one who created those who created the gods. You get what I'm saying? I am the one who started creation. Now, I know a lot of people are, might be offended by this, like, no, no, God created creation. God created a God, God, God. Well, what, this is what I'm saying, guys. The higher being that, you know, a lot of people believe in might indeed be the God people speak of. We may have different names for it. I have a name for it. Um, it is actually in my pantheon of gods that I've created. Uh, I call it Dea. It is neither male nor female, but I've given it a physical form. It is the supreme one above all. It is the one who created my gods, the other gods. So like an example, in Greek mythology, the gods started with chaos, with nothing. And this form created Uranus, the god of the sky, and Gaia, or sometimes Gia, goddess of the earth. And they are what spawned the Titans, the primordial gods, and the primordial gods are what created the newer gods, the Olympians. 
and so on and so forth. So creation had to start with something. Now what created this super being? I don't know. I am not admitting that I know everything for certain. This is mainly theory that I have compiled through experimentation, through reading my books, uh, through the opinions of other authors and other spiritualists. This is what I've come to firmly believe in myself because I, I think it makes sense. We are the product of someone's mind. And they, in turn, are the product of someone else's mind, and the next person goes on and on and on and on. It's an endless cycle of people. So when this world ends, this person has either stopped thinking about us, or they died. And why do I think this? Well. I, the world I talked about, you know, that uh, me and my friend used to know, the one I, the world I visit now in my mind is not the same one we used to visit years ago. <clears throat> this happened about two years ago. The world, I grew up, I matured. I started seeing things in a different light in my, in this world right here, the one we live in, the one you're watching it through. So I started maturing. Obviously, my imagination started maturing, too. The world that I had was way too kid-like. It was not good enough. And there was a balance that had to be maintained. I believe in every world there is a balance of good and evil. And this balance must be maintained. If anything is off balance too long, it can disrupt and potentially destroy the world. It was a mixture of me not thinking about this world too much anymore. I wanted a new world. And in this world, when I stopped thinking about it, I noticed earthquakes started erupting in places where they never erupted before. Volcanoes started spewing lava and destroying villages. Tsunamis came and swept people away. Thunderstorms came and just struck everything in their path, killing and destroying a lot of things. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what have I done? And another thing that contributed to this was I had messed with the balance too much. I had let the good half go for too long and I've let the bad go for too long. And eventually the scale broke. So everything was out of balance. The energy fields were off and we're causing the world to destroy itself. So that is why I instructed the chosen heroes of my world. I'm like, listen, I'm gonna need you to do something, but it, it will mean the destruction of everything around you, including yourselves. Are you willing to do this? But it will save everybody from a terrible, painful death. And they're like, absolutely, what do you want us to do? I told them to go into a temple that was hidden deep in the earth and to send their power to this crystal in this temple and when they gave up their powers I told them to give up their powers to this crystal it sent a massive shock wave that basically turned physical objects into energy the energy that's around us but we can't physically touch it turned everything back into its original form, which was this energy. And it obliterated them and the whole world, but it was quick, it was painless, and it was what was best for the world. It saddened me a great deal. I was at work when this happened. I was working on a machine and I knew it happened. I'm like, oh my goodness. But I was able to protect a few people. Some people had gotten on a rocket ship that was in the form of a castle. I know this sounds strange, but it's my imagination. And they were a few survivors who were able to become protected and they were able to leave the world before. And one of those people who was like my chosen, basically my chosen favorite hero, 
she had a belt that could absorb such energy. So she took the belt and it absorbed every piece of energy in there. Unfortunately, one of the people on the ship was corrupt and basically turned everyone else on the ship into energy too. So he tried to kill her, but in turn she killed him, turned him into energy, and absorbed him into the belt. And then after that, she I told her, because I gave her the power to become the creator of a world. I gave her that because she was trustworthy. She was the one I had chosen to start over. And she's like, okay, what do you want me to do? I'm like, I want you to create a world. Design it however you want. Create a world for me and make me proud. And she's like, I'll do that, Colton. I'll do that. So she did. And at first, this world, it had no oxygen. There were craters in it that, you know, people could fall in. There were gas chambers in these crevices. And if you were to get too close to them, they could burn you and incinerate your body. There were, um, there was no grass, no plants. There was just dust. Just dust on the ground. It was an uninhabitable world. And you're like, why did she create that? Well, it had to be. Life had to start somewhere. And it had to start slowly. If it started too fast, the shift, the balance that I told you about could become off whack way too quick. So she, in turn, started creating plants. That was the first thing, the first plant life. Then she started adding animals, you know, to it once oxygen started becoming more prevalent. She created the sun, which my original world had three suns and one moon. This world has one sun, one moon, just like this one. Then she started slowly adding people. Now, how did that work? Well, she obviously had to... She birthed them herself. I gave her that ability to... Um, like a lot of mother goddesses do. I gave her the ability to procreate without the need for a sexual partner. So she was able to do that. She raised them until there were the first two people. Of course, men and women. Because if there were two men or two women, they couldn't procreate. And she's not going to birth the entire world full of humans. Ouch. I may have given her the power, but it's probably still hurt. So she watched over them for a time. They knew who she was. They called her mother. She took the castle that they had gotten rid of, uh, like away from the old world on. She put it there, and that's where they lived. And eventually, they started having kids, and they started having kids, and they started having kids. Yeah, it sounds like incest, but that's how we were. Eventually, she was able to help them, you know, breed healthily, you know, normally. And eventually, they started having families, they started having families, they started having families, you know, and, and so on. And they kept building and building. They started building villages, villages which became hamlets, and hamlets which became cities. And, you know, it started. Now, when... I know I'm kind of getting off topic here, um, but basically... I was the one in charge. I was, I was totally, I wasn't completely at fault for destroying the world, but I did so for the sake of everyone on it. And I'll talk, like I said, I'll talk about this more later on. This is a huge segment and I'm going to teach you guys. And it, it's something that you really, really should do in your spiritual path. I'm telling you, seriously. And I'll tell you. So, that is my opinion on... What the supreme being, if he exists, he, she, it, or exists, you know, is. That's what I believe. A lot of people ask me, um, what do you believe spiritually? And I tell them, I'm like, I do believe in gods. I believe in all gods um, because we give them energy. I believe in everything that people believe uh, except the devil, you know, the Christian villain. Because he only exists if you believe he exists. So a lot of people unknowingly create him by fear. They're like, oh, I hope the devil don't get me. I hope the devil don't get me. Hopefully the devil's not here. You create him by thinking that. So control your emotions, control your thoughts, and he won't exist. He won't be able to harm you. You have to have the mentality of I have more power than any negative spirit out there. 
and I will crush them if they try to destroy me. Have that confidence. Now, I know what you're thinking, especially people who are non-spiritual. How can you think like that? You know, how can you tell someone who has no experience with spirituality not to be afraid of something like a demon or a negative entity? Because with my knowledge, I can help you bring the truth. And the truth being is that you are more powerful than these spirits. You've got the power. You're still living. You're physical. And you have power over this. Whatever it is, anything negative, you have the power. If you don't think you have the power, you're not going to have it. If you do think you have the power, that is going to work. That being said, guys, um, if you guys believe in a supreme power above the gods that we worship in any culture, if you believe that there is something above all them, Put it down in the comment section. I would love to hear what you guys think, what you guys believe. If you agree with me, say why. You know, I want to hear it. If you guys believe in something different, tell me. But please, guys, I know some people are, you know, religion and spirituality is a sensitive topic. Please don't, um, if people share what they believe, don't rag on them. Don't, don't be a jerk, you know. Don't take what they, you know, what's their opinion at face value. None of us truly know. Even as enlightened as I am, I don't know. I'm still learning here. So please be respectful in the comment section if people, you know, tell you what they believe. Please. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell button so you don't miss any future videos. And... Share this with as many people as you can. I want to get this information out there, guys. Help people learn. Help people find out how to protect themselves from spiritual stuff, from evil spiritual stuff. Try to help them on their spiritual path. Please, share as, ma as much as you can. And um, may the Supreme Being watch over you and guide your efforts in all your endeavors.